Today, we are talking all things heavy armor. Now, we've got a lot of ground to cover and no time to waste, so let's head inside and let's get to it. Seven Days to Die has a tier system for most items in the game. Heavy armor is no exception. There are three different tiers of heavy armor. Tier one is the scrap armor. So we've got the scrap helmet, scrap leg armor, scrap gloves, scrap chest armor, and the scrap boots. Tier two is the iron level. So all of the same armor pieces just made out of iron. And tier three of heavy armor is steel. Every piece of armor in the game has a list of stats. The top level will not only tell you the armor rating, it'll also tell you whether or not it is heavy or light. For instance, the steel helmet says heavy armor rating of 13, but if we take a look at this military helmet, you'll notice it changed to light armor rating of 10. So the top line will tell you the armor rating and it will also distinguish whether it is heavy or light armor. The second line is your explosion resistance. This number will tell you how resistant this piece of armor is to explosions or splash damage from explosions. The next line is the armor crit resist line. This stat determines how resistant you are to critical attacks from those zombie jerks. The next line is the stamina per second line. That's right, folks, wearing armor does have a stamina cost. Now, it doesn't cost stamina to do every action, but for a lot of the actions, like swinging your weapon, swinging a tool, or sprinting, it does cost stamina to wear armor. The next line is mobility. Heavy armor is heavy. As such, it decreases your mobility, makes you slower while wearing heavy armor. The next line is noise increase. As you can imagine, running around in a giant metal suit may be a bit noisy. So as such, wearing heavy armor will increase your noise level. The noise level is what zombie jerks use to detect you. So if you're sneaking, it's going to make you a lot easier to detect when you're wearing heavy armor. And the last line here is durability. This stat determines how much punishment your armor can take before it breaks. Heavy armor, like most items in the game, does have a perk that improves your heavy armor. It is located in the strength attribute. Now, as you increase the level of heavy armor, you'll notice that it doesn't actually improve the damage resistance. All it does is reduce the movement and stamina penalties and improve the durability. Also, at Tier 1, you will unlock Iron Armor Crafting. Steel Armor, however, is not unlocked using the Heavy Armor perk. You have to find the Steel Armor schematic in order to craft Steel Armor. But if you get this bad boy all the way up to level 4, you will gain the ability to craft Quality 5 Heavy Armor, and reduce your movement and stamina penalty by 25%. You will also improve the durability of your armor by 200%. Now, let's take a look at some of the mods that are available for this armor. First up, we've got our armor pocket mods. These open up either one, two, or three spaces in your inventory. So you'll notice in the beginning, a lot of these inventory slots are locked off. In order to get extra carrying capacity, you need to throw on either the armor mods or the pocket mods onto your clothing. These are the three armor mods that can go onto the heavy armor. Next, we have the plating mods. We have the armor plating mod, which gives you plus one to your armor rating. And we have the banded armor plating mod that gives you plus two to armor rating. The next set of mods improve your stamina and mobility cost. So we have the basic improved fitting that gives you plus 0.02 to, to the stamina and the mobility of plus 2%. And we have the customized fitting mod that increases the stamina to 0.05 and the mobility to 3%. There are also mods that decrease that noise level. We have the muffled connectors mod that decreases it by 4%. And we have the advanced muffled connectors that decreases it by 8%. Next, we have the Elements mods. These are things that will give you more heat or cold resistance. For instance, the Cooling Mesh mod will give you plus five to heat resist. 
It also has the added bonus of giving you plus one to explosion resistance. Then we have the insulated liner that does the opposite. It gives you plus five to cold resist, but it still gives you that plus one to explosion resistance. And on the bottom here, I've got a whole bunch of mods that are armor specific. For instance, we have the bandolier mod that gives you 15% faster reload speed. However, it can only be installed into your chest or leg armor. Those are the only two pieces that can accept the bandolier mod. Next up, we have the impact bracer. This reduces fall damage. This mod can only go into your boots. And then we have a whole bunch of mods that can only go into your helmet. For instance, we got the helmet light mod, obviously gives you a light on your helmet. We have the water purifier, which allows you to drink murky water without uh, getting dysentery. And then we have the cap mods. We have the cowboy hat, we have the ball cap, press boy cap, and the skull cap. Now, the advantage of these is they will give you all the benefits of, of that clothing item without having to sacrifice the armor rating. So, if you live in the desert, you can throw the cowboy hat mod on your steel helmet and get yourself that plus 13 heat resist without sacrificing the armor. Now, before we head out and test these various armor sets against some zombie jerks, there is one more thing I wanted to cover, and that is a very special book that you should be on the lookout for, especially, especially if you're going to be wearing heavy armor. That, of course, is Urban Combat Volume 6. This gives you the adrenaline rush. Use the adrenaline rush of combat to energize your body Armor doesn't slow you down when in combat. That is an amazing bonus to have because every piece of heavy armor automatically decreases your mobility by 6%. So having a full set decreases your mobility by 30%. Now, if you're getting swarmed by a whole bunch of zombie jerks, you're in combat, that can be a problem. However, this book right here totally negates that mobility penalty so you can if you need to you can get out of dodge plus you can uh, move around a lot better you'll be a lot more effective in combat with urban combat volume 6. now let's head outside and let's test these armor sets up against some zombie jerks so in order to test the effectiveness of each of these sets i've gone ahead and invited our good friend arlene here to smack us around for a bit so first thing I'm going to do is take off everything. I am completely naked. We're going to turn Arlene's AI back on and we are going to take a punch and see how much damage she does. So let's get our baseline test. Let her smack us. And then we're going to do the same test with each of these sets of armor. And the last thing I'm going to do is demonstrate the effectiveness of Urban Combat Volume 6. So first up, Arlene, if you would, please smack me in the face. Thank you, Arlene. <laughs> All right, so one basic smack took off eight hit points. The one smack from zombie Arlene with no armor, eight hit points down. Let's go ahead and reset, and let's get our scrap armor on. All right, there we go. We've got a full set of scrap armor on. Let's go ahead and get Arlene to give us another smack. And that time, zombie Arlene took us down four hit points. So let's go ahead and reset and let's throw on our ironware. All right, now we've got a full set of iron armor on and let's get her to smack us again. Hey Arlene, would you please punch me in the face? Thank you, Arlene. And as you can see with the full set of iron, we took three points of damage. Let's go ahead and reset and get the steel bad boys on. There we go, full set of steel armor is now on. Arlene, if you would, please come and punch me in the face. There we go, all right. So you'll notice that we still took three points of damage. Now let's go ahead and add in a little extra armor resistance and see if we can get that down even more. All right, so I went ahead and put banded armor mods giving us plus two to each one of our armor stats we are up to an armor rating of 77. So let's see if that will decrease it at all. All right, Arlene, please punch us in the face. 
Boom, and there we go. As you see, we are down to taking only two points of damage while being punched in the face by zombie Arlene. Now you may be asking, how exactly does the armor rating work? Well, this number here is the percentage that your damage is reduced. So in the beginning, Arlene was doing eight points of damage to us. Now she's only doing two points of damage. That's because 77% of the damage is being negated. 77% of eight is roughly six. So eight minus six leaves us with two. We are taking two points of damage. That's how the armor rating works. The higher the armor rating, the lower amount of damage you will actually take. And for this last test, I need a whole bunch of zombie jerks, so a whole bunch of Arlene's coming at me. So I'm going to turn on their AI and start walking backwards. And you'll notice how slow I go. I want to show you how effective Urban Combat Volume 6 is. So first we'll get these ladies coming after me. All right, now see how slowly we're, we're backing off. We are barely putting any distance between us and the zombie jerks. Now we're going to test it again. I've got another bunch of, Ar of zombie Arlene's here. We're gonna go ahead and read Urban Combat Volume 6. There we go. Now I'm going to turn on their AI and walk backwards again. And you'll notice we are moving so much faster. That's because there is no movement penalty now that we are in combat. So we can just, uh, ooh, ow, ouch, circle around them, circle around them, keep them moving. And there is no movement penalty while we are in combat. So as they're chasing us, we are able to put a lot of distance between them and us. So excellent book to find. You can keep wearing that heavy armor and not have to worry about, about being slowed down in combat. Come and get me, ladies. But you can't, because I'm too damn fast. Now, choosing which type of armor you want to go with will depend on your style of play. Heavy armor is great for tank builds. That's why it is located in the strength tree, because you have Pummel Pete and Skull Crusher, the club and the sledgehammer, two of the best melee weapons in the game. And you also have Boomstick, which covers shotguns. Shotguns are close range weapons. So heavy armor is best suited for close range combat, like melee or shotguns. Heavy armor is not very well suited for a sneaky type of gameplay. If you are the type of person who likes to sneak around, heavy armor is not for you. For the simple reason that wearing heavy armor increases your noise level by 20%. That means wearing a full set of heavy armor increases your noise level by 100%, making you twice as likely to be heard or to be noticed by the zombie jerks. Sneaking around in heavy armor, not the best thing. If you're going for a sneaky build, light armor is probably the armor for you. Heavy armor definitely has some pros and cons. On the plus side, heavy armor offers the best armor rating in the game. So if you're looking to just straight up mitigate damage as much as possible, heavy armor is probably the best choice. On the downside, however, heavy armor also comes with a lot of negative penalties. You are much slower, you use a lot more stamina, and make a lot more noise while wearing heavy armor. I really hope you folks found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss a single one of our tutorial videos. And speaking of which, go ahead and click the box in the top right corner to catch up on all of the tutorials we've released so far. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me in Savin's World. And remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve.